Hi, I'm Priyal de Soiza. Welcome to my talk. Today I'm going to continue talking about clinical genomics uh, and today's topic is PCR in clinical diagnostics. I defined clinical genomics in my last presentation and I hope you remember that. I previously described common types of genomics analysis uh, and today uh, I'm going to be talking about um, a PCR which is related to gene amplification amplification based um, testing which has um, come on board since the late 1980s. Of course in my previous talk I, I talked about target enriched NGS panels So what is PCR? Um, PCR stands for um, uh, polymerase chain reaction and it's a biochemical analytic pr analytical procedure which uses thermostable enzymes. Uh, in, in other words, uh, enzymes which are um, work under extremely high temperatures. It's a process that was invented by Kerry Mullis in 1988, and it's such an important process that he won the Nobel Prize in Chemistry in 1933. Um, the, the process enables detection as well as measurement uh, of the copy number, so it can detect either single point mutations, uh, deletions, insertions, um, as well as the um, uh, a gene, a presence or absence of a gene. Um, uh, it can also measure the copy number as it's a um, quantitative process as well as being a qualitative one. Well, how does it do it? Well, it does it by amplifying uh, a few copies more than a million times um, and uh, it enables to see um, a DNA or an RNA molecule which is otherwise undetectable. There are two types of PCR, and I'm going to talk about their applications. Um, there's two, uh, endpoint PCR, uh, which is largely used in R&D labs, and the more clinically oriented one is quantitative or qPCR, also known as real-time PCR. Uh, the applications that each of these are used in um, is uh, for endpoint PCR or RT-PCR, where you can actually have an RNA molecule as your template, and include single and multiple uh, locus mutation tests, things like uh, RFLP, restriction fragment length polymorphism, uh, sequencing, um, uh, single stranded confirmation polymorphism, cloning, uh, and gene synthesis. For quantitative PCR or RT PCR, you can uh, use it for genotyping, mutation detection, uh, copy number variation, uh, and also for pathogen detection, and uh, especially in viral detection, like for coronavirus. So what is needed to perform a, a qPCR or a qRT-PCR? Uh, first of all, you need a template, uh, which is a DNA or an RNA sample um, from a patient, uh, and you need to carry it out in either a microcentrifuge tube or microtiter well. You need a thermostable DNA polymerase, polymerase such as TAC, which uh, is a polymerase isolated from a, a thermophile called Thermus aquaticus. Um, uh, for RNA template, you need to have RNA a reverse transcriptase um, added as well. Um, for, you need to have the building blocks, which are um, deoxynucleotide triphosphates uh, and two DNA primers, which are prerequisite for the enzymes to work and build new DNA. Um, each of the primers will bind to separate ends of the amplicon on either strand. Um, you need an enzyme buffer uh, and you need chemical ions and the chemical ions which are important are potassium uh, which helps to keep the DNA strands rigid and separate uh, a bit like uh, spaghetti when you add salt to your uh, pasta to keep it from sticking together and this magnesium ions are important as a core factor for the the polymerase you also need a probe primer um, if, if you have one very specific detection of the assay uh, and these are already pre-designed in the kits you buy um, otherwise you can use cyber green which is a, um, a specific stain for DNA uh, which will uh, light up the reaction and fluoresce during the, the, uh, the process and um, 
causing it to be measured on the PCR machine. Finally, you need the PCR instrument, which will carry out all the measurement of the um, the process of the uh, the progress of the reaction.